happened to all those Europeans who survived 17th century shipwrecks on our coast. Many, many years ago, long before the first fleet, and well before James Cook first sighted Australia, something happened here on the coast of West Australia that could well rewrite our history books. We think that in total 11 of these ships have been hitting the Australian west coast. In total, maybe three to 400 people have survived and have reached the Australian coast. Could these Aboriginal men be some of their descendants? DNA testing is about to reveal Australia's secret history. That perhaps the Dutch, not the English, were Australia's first European settlers. They found out in the course of the 17th century that they could reach Indonesia much faster if they took a southern course in between 35 and 40 degrees. Dutch scientist and historian Dr. Peter Boll. He says at least 11 Dutch vessels were wrecked on or near the Australian coast. Several of these ships had, say, 65 or 100 or even 150 of survivors. And invariably, uh, little smaller boats were sent to Batavia, the capital of Indonesia, to come to the rescue of the maroon sailors. And they find nobody. They have disappeared. So where did they go? It must have been that they were held. And there is quite much evidence that they mixed, that there was a Dutch mixture in the genome of the Aboriginals. For two centuries, Holland was the world superpower. This room was really the headquarters of the world in the economical, military and political sense. It was about the Oval Office of that time. From this room, the Dutch East India Company ruled the globe. It sent thousands of ships to Southeast Asia on the wildly lucrative spice trade, many loaded with treasure. It was a perilous journey. Ships sailing to Indonesia used strong winds that pushed them in the direction of Australia. Some turned too late. They were just blown against that razor blade sharp cliffs. Just imagine three centuries ago, the draggled survivors of a shipwreck tearing themselves up cliffs like this. It must have been horrendous. The largest group of shipwreck survivors to have made it ashore were the crew and soldiers aboard the Dutch ship Zoutdorp. Wolfgang Schoolmeister. Andries van den Hoeven. They were wrecked on these cliffs near Monkey Meyer in June 1712. So what we do know is that three centuries ago, there were survivors from the Zoutdorp that staggered up these cliffs from the shipwreck, possibly as many as 200. What we don't know, what one of the great mysteries of early Australian settlement, is what happened next. Did they get help from the local Aborigines? Did they survive? Within some days, some must have died, from cold, from thirst, from hunger. But we think that a, a vast majority has been rescued by the Aboriginals and has been also mixing with them. The first people to settle Australia were Dutch. Yes. Not English. That's correct completely overturns all of our understanding of history. Yep. Tom Vandervelt is president of WA's Dutch East India Company Historical Society. Initially, they would have built fires to attract other ships. They had food that came off the ship. They had the yams. There would have been goats on the ships to dump 100 or 200 white people onto an Aboriginal tribe would have been totally impossible because the Aboriginals wouldn't have had food for them. So I think that some went south down to the most Murchison River where there was water, and some would, might have gone north here to Shark Bay. Then they would have intermarried and they would have had offspring.
for the survivors of those terrible shipwrecks to be swept from this world to the barren shores of the Southland, as they called it, Western Australia as we now know it, would have been a terrible shock. But what we do know is that they brought some of their old world habits and customs with them. There's this 17th century tobacco tin found buried 10 kilometres from the Zoutdorp wreck. The Nanta Aborigines who lived in Shark Bay 400 years ago still use Dutch words. Butchi, the phonetics at least, is, is a Dutch word for small boat. And early English settlers were stunned by the European appearance and ways of some of the Aborigines they met. Like blonde hair, men being bald at older age, tall uh, persons, say several inches higher than the normal Aboriginal, and then also uh, little children that the English uh, spotted when they came there the first time, and who had names like Willem. So, <laughs> blue eyes. <laughs> It might even be possible to get a name for some of those survivors who were marooned on the shores of Western Australia between three and four hundred years ago. That's because many of the ship files are still kept here in the Dutch National Archives. We know that when the British settlers went through Western Australia yeah. in 1829, mm -hmm. one of the first names that one of the Aboriginal kids was called was Willem. Willem. Can we see if there was a Willem? Then we go to the double U, and then we have there to look. There we have it. Goodness me. This is Willem, Willem Cardoon from Raasdorp by Gulik. Gulik, that is in Germany. So there's four Willems that four were Four Willems, decided. yeah. And, you know, it's possible that mm -hmm. one of these Willems made a baby with an Aboriginal woman 300 years ago. Wonderful to think about it. And DNA may soon provide the proof. In Western Australia, Aboriginal men like Arthur Pepper and Howard Cock are being tested. A swab on the end of it, and if you stroke it up and down... In the tests are so accurate, they can not only determine which country samples of their DNA came from, but also when, right down to within a couple of decades. Could be anything in you know, any of us. Sure. So mm. I'm quite happy to see the truth come out, and mm. I hope you find some people with it. There are a lot of people in Holland and Germany who would be delighted to have Aboriginal uh, relatives. Uh. <laughs> well, yeah, that could well be too. <laughs> They'll come and stay with you for three years. Um, you know. While we wait for the evidence that might solve the mystery of what happened on Australia's west in WA and in Holland, convinced that there were Dutch and other European Australians here among the Aborigines long before the First Fleet. Well, the hard proof will be the DNA. DNA proof. And uh, this month, uh, news will come from, from that. If the proof is definitive, do you think, as a Dutchman, the full story, Dutch settlement of Australia, should be acknowledged? Yes, then it is inevitable to acknowledge that there was a presence before the First Fleet, yeah. So, a Dutch Australia. Well, now, there's a thought. There'd be the obligatory windmills, pretty good beer, lots of cheese. Good morning, ladies. It's unlikely the Dutch will go to war to reclaim Australia. But they do love the idea of showing up the British. Wie heeft de Australië ontdekt? And those DNA tests are due in a matter of months. The carbon dating of the cave paintings within days will bring